Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at interacting with the keyboard using JavaScript. Now, right here, I've got this index HTML and I've also got this page opened up in the browser with the Chrome developer tools open. So let's begin this video by talking about how we can, of course, respond to when the user uh, presses a key on the keyboard. So this is all going to be done using uh, keyboard events okay so essentially you'll need to bind keyboard events to some sort of HTML elements now if you want your keyboard events to uh, work no matter what the user is doing on the page it's probably a good idea to bind those keyboard events to the body itself. So going inside this script tag right here, let's just say document.body.addEventListener. Now we're going to be listening for, uh, first off, the key down event. Okay, so the key down event is one of the keyboard events and essentially it's going too far off when the user presses a key down on their keyboard. Okay, so if I was to now go inside this function and I say console.log, um, you pressed down. Okay, let's have a look at what happens in the console. So I'll save this, go back in the browser here, I'll refresh and then I'm going to press a key down on my keyboard and we get you pressed down. Now, if I was to hold down a key, for example, something like this, we can see the event is continuously firing off um, at small increments. So 180 events just fired off because I held down the letter Q for about five to 10 seconds. So that right there is your key down event. Now, um, you know, if I just go back inside the code here, of course, just to clarify, this arrow function is going to run um, whenever the event is fired off. And of course, you can put your own code inside here to react to those events. Now, the key down event is going to be perfect for quick reactions. For example, if you are building a JavaScript game, um, you may want to react quickly to the user's input. Therefore, the key down event might be a good choice. Now, before moving on to the next keyboard event, I want to briefly show you the event object. So if we place EV inside these parentheses here, I'm now going to say console.log ev.key. Okay, so this right here is going to give us information as to what key we pressed. If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, I now press the A key, we get A, oh, my mistake, let's go in the actual, you know, web page itself and try again, I'll press A and we get A right there. Okay, if I press Z, we get Z and so on. If I was to press the space bar, we get space, just like that. If I press enter, we get enter. So. That right there is how you're able to, of course, react to key down and also check what key the user has clicked on. So, or press, should I say. So, of course, you can say something like if ev.key is equal to b, then do something down here, you know, as an example. So, that is your first keyboard event. Now, I'm going to change this code back to uh, simply being console.log and I'll just say something like decode, all right? Now, let's change the keyboard events to be key up instead. So now if I was to save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and if I was to hold the A key, we see nothing happens in the console. This is because my finger is still on the A key. If I let go, we get the event being fired off. So the key up is similar to key down. It's reacting to a key press, but key up only fires off when I let go of the key, just like that. So this is where maybe you can uh, add keyboard shortcuts to your website. Uh, maybe you only want the keyboard shortcut to fire off when the user lets go. That way they actually have a chance to undo um, what they're doing as an example, right? So that's your key up event and it works the exact same way in terms of being able to detect um, what key they're using. You just say ev.key to of course obtain that information. Now, there is one last keyboard event to briefly cover 
and that is called key press. So if I change this to be key press, I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and I press some keys, it's going to work. Now, this key press event is not recommended to be used anymore, and it behaves in a very similar fashion, if not exactly the same, as the key down event. So I just want to quickly bring to your attention that key press does exist and you may find it online throughout different code bases or tutorials and so on. But as of 2023, um, it is not recommended that you use the key press event, stick to key down and key up. Now, before moving on to the next part of this video, I want to quickly cover input fields because as we just saw, there were no input fields being uh, used to demonstrate those examples. So um, I just wanna quickly cover here. If I create a new input, okay, with a type of text and I'll give this an ID of something like my text field or my input field maybe, that probably works better. So if I was to now go inside the JavaScript, I'll say const my input field equal to document dot gets element by ID, pass through here my input field. So now of course I've selected the input field using JavaScript. If I then say my input field dot add event listener and listen for the input event, okay, I'm just going to now uh, console dot log here, um, hello. Okay, I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, now if I was to enter some input inside the input field, I'll press space, we get hello right there. Now, the reason why I covered this is because technically this is not a keyboard event, but it is very similar. Of course, the primary way in which users get data into an input field is gonna be through their keyboard, but it does not mean that the input event is a keyboard event. Okay, for example, if I was to copy this hello and I paste it inside the input field, it fires off again, as we can see there with the number two. So I didn't use my keyboard and the event still fired off. So I just wanted to quickly cover there that, of course, the input event and the change event are not technically keyboard events, even though they're typically triggered via the keyboard. Okay, so the first two, key down, key up, the actual keyboard events. Now, the last part of this video is gonna be to uh, cover the keyboard event object in a bit more detail. We saw ev.key just before, but I want to explore that a little bit further. So I'm just going to control Z and undo my changes here and go back to our keyboard event example. And I'll just change this to be key down, okay? Actually, let's make it key up, okay? Cool, I'm now gonna console.log ev, so the actual event object itself. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we can see if I was to provide some input or a key up event, I'll press A and let go. This is our keyboard event object. We can see here it says keyboard event, and it is triggered by the key up and the key down event. Now, when I say triggered, it's not the best word to use. Maybe it's better to say it's provided by the key up and the key down event. But anyway, you're, gonna ha you're going to grab hold of this object here and it contains information about the, uh, the event. So we can see here we have a couple of properties that are important. Alt key equal to false. We have control key equal to false. If I scroll down, we've also got the shift key equal to false. And we can see the key property that we discovered earlier is also there. So these shift key and control key and alt key are useful because if your user is holding down one of those keys, when they press or when they trigger your keyboard event, that's gonna be true in this object. So this means if I was to now hold control and then press E, probably not the best, uh, shortcut to use. Let's try control A. That's much better. Now we can see here we get two events because I had two key ups. One was the control key and one was the A key. But if I was to go on the A key keyboard event, we can see the control key is set to true. All right. So we now know based on this event object, I press control A. 
So if you want to bind a keyboard shortcut, for example, onto your website, you can do so and detect the control key plus the A key. I've got a whole video dedicated to that, which I'll leave in the top right corner of this video right now. But if I was to go back inside VS Code here, just to demonstrate it, I can say something like if ev.key is equal to A and ev.control key, I can say console.log you pressed control plus A. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, I'll do control A, let go of the A key and we get you press control A. Okay, so we can see there how we're able to detect uh, the control shift or alt key at the same time as the key down or the key up event. And that is all for today's video. Hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.